Hello, and my new mouse has arrived. In the end, I went for the Rocket Cone XTD. So, got all the normal things that a mouse should have. Left and right buttons, scroll wheel. Oh, the scroll wheel's also got tilt left and right. It's got Windows button. It's got buttons for dropping or increasing the DPI. Two buttons on the side, which are pretty big. Quite easy to hit with your thumb, although you have to reach forward for the front one. And it's got a really nice sort of thumb grip. It's got a few more flares on it than the Razer Death Adder had. And it's a much smoother mouse over a mouse map. It seems to glide a lot better than the Razer Death Adder did. And that might be because it's got a much bigger slip surface underneath. In fact, the whole back end of the mouse has got a slip surface. And rather than the optical sensor of the Death Adder, this thing has got an 8200 DPI laser sensor. Hopefully you could hear those mouse clicks because they're quite a bit quieter than the Death Adder. So let's compare the two. Profile wise, pretty similar, although as you can see the XTD has a thumb rest. And even from the top, apart from the flares at the front, they're a pretty similar shape. However, the XTD feels a lot more solid than the Death Adder. And like I say, the Death Adder is a bit rough when you move it. The XTD is a lot smoother. And I think that is just because it's got much larger slip surfaces. And in general, it just feels a bit more solid than the Death Adder. Now admittedly, my Death Adder is a couple of years old and I can't really remember what it was like. But the Death Adder, even though it's lighter, takes a lot more force to push it across a mouse map. So the Death Adder disappears off into the reserve pile and the XTD is my new mouse of choice. What I'll do is use this for a couple of weeks, see how I like it, see how it performs in games and on Battlefield and then I'll give you a report. Now software wise this is a lot easier to use than the Death Adder and the G500. So on the left hand side of this screen we've got the basic sensitivity options. So you've got overall mouse sensitivity and the sensitivity of the vertical scroll wheel and the horizontal tilts. The right hand side of the screen lets you set up five levels for your DPI and those are the levels that the DPI buttons on top of the mouse will jump through. And you can have an overexcited American voice telling you what DPI you've just changed to. 6,400 DPI. 3,200 DPI. 1,800 DPI. That's the audio feedback of using the DPI up and down buttons, and I'll be turning that off. So here we have a really nice interface for changing what each button on the mouse does. And you may notice that there are two interfaces that are showing two different setups of mouse buttons. And we'll come to that in a moment. So every mouse button is reprogrammable, including what they call the Windows buttons and the DPI buttons. You can change those to different functions. But this is the interesting part, the easy shift. Now the side buttons you can set to easy shift. And what that does is maps completely different functions to the other buttons while you're holding that one down. So now we've got easy shift on. Whenever we press that button in and hold it, these mouse functions will be used instead of the main ones. And when we release it, it goes back to the main mouse functions. So that means instead of having to hit different side buttons, you can hit one side button, then hit left click, and it would deploy your med bag. Or if you right clicked, it would hit the defibs. Effectively, it gives you the option to have a shift left mouse button and a shift right mouse button and even a shift scroll wheel. And you can combine macros onto those as well. So there's a pretty simple macro editor that's in there that you've seen on most stuff before. 
Now another interesting feature you've got is this individual X and Y sensitivity. So you can change those for the mouse as a whole. You've got a couple of options there for altering your lift off distance and to some extent how far you can push it on your mouse pad. Oh, I haven't quite worked out how that works. You've got the ability to have acceleration in windows but I've turned that off just on the safe side and you can change the pole rate. Now you've got four different colours options on the mouse and what it does is it blends in between those so that will have it red at the top blending down into blue at the bottom and you can put different things like a heartbeat or breathing on it and different little fancy features. This is basically your mouse's statistics and it lets you see what you've been using the mouse for and you've got drivers and you've got help. So the reason I picked this rocket cone is because of the shift function which sounded really good and because that shift function also works on any rocket keyboard with the same shift button. So you can hit a button on the keyboard and shift the functions on your mouse or you can hit the shift button on your mouse and change all your key mappings. So it's quite a versatile little system. I've already tried it using the shift on the mouse buttons and that works really well. So that's my new Rocket Cone XTD. And like I say, I'll have a play around with it for a couple of weeks, play around with these special functions, especially the shift function, and see how it goes, and see how it performs in Battlefield, if I can get the same settings as I used to have on my Death Adder. Thanks for watching.